In our ongoing quest to provide you with the best in strategy guides, we've gone around the world to Bangladesh to find someone who is an expert in Brass Birmingham. Today I'm joined by Mafuel Robin who will share his insights on this amazing game and perhaps create the definitive guide to strategy in Brass Birmingham here on Legendary Tactics. So today we'd like to welcome uh, Mafuel Robin, who is uh, a big fan of Brass Birmingham, who has uh, played over 400 games and won some tournaments. And uh, he's very excited to share his strategy ideas uh, with us today. So thank you so much for joining us all the way from Bangladesh as well. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, thank you so much for having me. And hello, everyone. <laughs> I know everyone's going to be, Brass Birmingham is a really popular game. It's a fun game. There's, there's a lot of people out there that want to get better. And I think that your, uh, your strategy ideas are going to be a, a, a big help. That's going to be, um, you know, you're going to have a big impact with the community. So that's great. Thank you so much. Um, so tell us a little bit about your experience with Brass Birmingham, first of all. Well, uh, I'm a board gamer who plays mostly strategy games. And, mm -hmm. and many of them are Euro game. And uh, Brass is one of the best board game I have ever played. And it is one of the most played game. I have played Brass uh, um, uh, more than 400 times. Yeah. I have played um, <laughs> in several uh, gaming groups, uh, played it on Tabletop Simulator, on uh, Brass Discord community, uh, recently Brass Digital Edition, is out. I have played, I was able to play it online there. Yeah. And I have also actually played all the solo variant Brass Birmingham have. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so you played it a lot. <laughs> That's great. Um, In this you... uh, lockdown, there was some uh, tournaments happening online. I was very privileged to uh, join and, and own. <laughs> and, and you did well. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, no, that it can be a bit stressful playing a game. You know, you're used to playing it for fun, and then you get into a tournament situation, and it's sometimes a little bit stressful. But uh, <laughs> that's great that you were able to do that. So, so um, today's strategy guide. Who is it for? Who, who are we aiming this at? Uh, today we will uh, talk about uh, uh, advanced strategies of Brass Birmingham. So. The players who are familiar with this game already played it a couple of times, they will actually get the most out of it. But even uh, the new players, they will also uh, get a lot of useful information and uh, can take uh, some advantage from these strategies, even in their uh, first game. Okay, so taking a look at the big picture here, what would you say is the most important focus in this game? There is two things they have to focus most one is the action and another one is the victory point mm -hmm. here our people a uh, player will win who have the highest victory point at the end game it is not about having higher vp at the end of canal era or not having good income through whole game rather whoever have the highest victory point despite anything else will win and they, and there is finite number of actions uh, in this game, and they have to uh, make the best use of these actions to achieve the highest victory points. In a two-player game, there is a 10 round uh, per era, so a player will get 39 actions. In a three-player game, there is nine turns per era, so a player will get total 35 actions. And in a four-player game, there is eight round per era, so a player will get total 31 actions. So in a, a two-player game, normally uh, uh, the winning player score a little more than 200. Three-player game, uh, winner normally have 175 score. And in a four-player game, 155 or higher is normally the winner player score. So if you do divide total action and with the um, victory point of the winner, you will see on average, the winner actually achieve more than five victory points per action. Interesting. So, That's a great yeah. breakdown. 
<laughs> yes, it is. And actually, our player ha uh, have to plan accordingly. So at the end of the game, they are supposed to uh, achieve a victory point, uh, uh, which will be on average uh, five per action. But mm. in reality, uh, it is not always possible to get uh, five victory point per action because there is often some actions with a dead action, which doesn't give any VP. For example, develop action, scout action, or some yeah. links who, who doesn't give that much VP. So yeah. it is about uh, having the uh, very high VP at the end of the game. So total average actually uh, remain five. Yes, but most of that's going to arrive at the end of the... So in turn one, you shouldn't be stressed if you <laughs> didn't get five victory points per action early on. It's, it all comes at the end. Yes, exactly. Uh, here, after uh, listening to this uh, whole strategy guide, they will have a full picture of what they want to do in this whole game. And they should imagine the final picture as a solved puzzle. In the, and in the whole game, they will try to achieve that solved puzzle by themselves. And they will always keep in mind that despite whatever it seems, the main focus is to have the highest victory point, nothing else. And they have finite number of actions to achieve that. So their actions are most valuable thing in the whole game. It's not money, it's not income, it's not anything else. Rather, their action is the most valuable thing. Yeah, no, that's really, you know, that happens with a lot of Euro type games where you're building an engine. Uh, a lot of times people get so focused on building the engine, they forget they need to win the game. <laughs> you know, they, they worry <laughs> so much about boosting their income that they forget, oh, I need victory points to win. doesn't matter what your income is. So that's that's a very good point. So sure. um, looking at the, at, again, kind of big picture, is what's the difference, um, the main differences between the canal era and the rail era? Well, um, to explain this, we again have to go back to the uh, main two focus we have, that is our actions and victory points. So we want to achieve certain number of victory points at the end of the game. And the most of it will actually come from the rail era, which means our average victory point in the rail era will be much higher than the canal era. But still, in the canal era, we will try to get as much VP uh, as possible. And for that, we will actually focus on making industries which are level two or higher. Because level two or higher industries stays on the board and they score again in the rail era. That way, we are uh, spending our action to build in the canal era, but we are getting the benefit twice. So the average victory point increase very much with that. Yes, yeah, that's that's obviously you want to get past those level one technologies, you know, as soon as you can. That's always a challenge though, because uh, there's so much other stuff to focus on. <laughs> <laughs> True, yeah. uh, and to do that, um, what is another thing we will also focus us, uh, us on not doing on the canal era is not making a lot of canal. Rather, we will always try to make as less canal possible in the canal era because the canal normally doesn't give that much victory point. And this canal will actually go away in the real era. It will not score yeah. twice like other level two or higher industries. So we will try to make less canal. We'll try to take advantage of other players' canal. And we will actually save those actions by not making canal, rather we'll try to make as many level two or higher industries possible in the canal. Yeah, era. that's a really good idea. That's a really good idea. I could see that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, one yeah. exception will be we can actually make level one coal and level one iron because mm -hmm. these are very cheap to make and relatively they give much higher income compared to what they cost. And in early game, often we have to take the loan and we might become negative in our income, which is not good. Yeah. So to become uh, positive from the loan, uh, to become positive immediately, we will often make level one coal and iron. But mm. if we make level one iron, we will actually try to overbuild our own level one iron in the canal era with higher level 
uh, iron work later because we'll uh, we'll again go back to our main focus is that we will try to uh, save our action because action is the most precious thing so yeah. normally an iron industry and uh, iron work need coal so often to make a iron work we need to connect the location with a coal source so to connect that we have to make a link so making a link, link is one action if yes. we can make to our higher level iron work by overbuilding our level one iron that way we actually don't have to make a new link to make the new iron uh, that way yes. we are saving one piece of action yeah that's in, yeah that's interesting yeah it's all about efficiency right so that's uh, that's how yes. you're going to do that huh. yes sometimes it may look like that that uh, one link might have given some victory points like two three like that but mm -hmm. if we can save that action yep. you can actually do so much bigger thing with that action wow yeah no that's uh, that's great huh. yeah. and, okay. and <laughs> another thing to consider in the canal is that uh, very often we will see when we divide our uh, final score uh, by era, we will see the most VP is coming from rail era. That means uh, the, the rail era, the actions we'll have in rail era has so much more potential to give us victory points. So all the actions which are which we call dead actions because they do not give victory points, and we will uh, we are supposed to have them in the rail era. Mm -hmm. If we can take them in the canal era, that is actually good. That means in the canal era, we are spending those actions uh, by doing some things which doesn't give victory points, like taking some early loans, taking some extra loans, making some yeah. development, which we had to do anyway in the rail era. So if yeah. we can do that in the canal era, then in the rail era, we don't have to do that. So we have those extra actions and we can use those actions to make uh, other links and industries which actually give a lot more pps yeah so you, you set yourself up era. you set yourself up for the rail era beginning in the canal era so or at, like, the, at the end of canal era yeah yeah but you but you're you're taking actions that are going to actually help you in the in the uh in the rail era before they're needed so you're you're kind of uh, saving yourself time later on right yeah okay that's good and then um, when the rail era begins, what what uh, what would you say is a really important focus on in the rail era? Uh, the rail era is so much different. And then the canal era, it almost feels like a different game we are playing. Because <laughs> yeah. in the canal era, we were trying to make as less link possible. But now uh, the priority is totally different. Now we will try to make as many link as possible in the important places. Uh, huh. Because, yes, uh, uh, because um, as we are seeing our two fundamental, in fact, all the strategies we'll discuss today will be yeah. based on two main fundamental things that is victory point and action. So yeah. let's say you you will make an industry which will give you let's say uh, twelve victory point, but there are few actions il involved to achieve that twelve point. First, you may have to develop. Then industries are generally expensive, so you may have to take loan to get the money. Then you yeah. have to take a build action to make that industry, and then you also have to sell it. So there are at least four actions to. Uh, achieve the VP from that industry. But uh -huh. <laughs> if you, uh, and if you think, if you could have made just uh, three links with, uh, uh, oh, with those, uh, with those uh, or three actions, and the total victory point from those three links is higher than that industry, mm -hmm. then it is always better to make those three industries instead of uh, going for that building. So in the rail era, often um, some link uh, uh, values as much victory point as some industries. So proactively yeah. <laughs> capturing those links, link places is very important. And that yes. will be the primary focus in the rail era. Interesting. So that, yeah, it would feel like a different game because if, the, if uh, as you said, in the canal era, you just want to make the bare minimum place the bare minimum of canal links 
you know, and True. then your focus shifts uh, entirely. That's uh, that's really interesting. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, but all link location will not uh, value same, of course. Mm -hmm. So when those uh, most valuable links are gone and there are skins still some actions left, then players are supposed to make uh, industries, the industries which will give them a lot of victory point. So that yes. is also a very important thing because when the difference between uh, victory point is so little between the players and everybody actually proactively captured all the high victory point links, then the difference will be who actually was able to make some uh, industries which gave some edge to some player. Yeah. Wow. Well, that and that kind of leads right into my my next uh, um, question, which is, um, you know, just about the, um, uh, you know, which industries should you focus on? You know, overall. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you so much for asking, because uh, a huge part of this game is actually choosing the industry. Well, yeah. um, uh, which industries uh, should someone focus on? There is yeah. actually. Uh, two part of it. One is some industries are universal, which they have to make in all player count, um, yeah. like iron and beer. And beer. I've it's always loved that, that they have beer as a as a major in, ingredient in the industrial revolution. <laughs> but <laughs> yes, and and, and this is uh, so much thematical too, because uh, at, at that time, the drinking water was not actually really um, uh, clean and hygienic or uh, yeah. even safe to drink. So water actually had to depend on beer for uh, Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. So yeah, so iron and beer, no matter what the, the era, you know, that should be, you should always take advantage of opportunities to uh, develop those, right? Uh, to make them, yes, yeah. not develop. Or sorry, um, my, uh, yes, to make they them. They have to develop level one beer, of course, uh, mm -hmm. because they want to take a build action and take the advantage of the victory point twice if they can start building from level two. And even if they make level one iron, and they are supposed to overbuild with a higher level uh, iron industry. So they are saving some action by not making link and uh, getting the victory point of uh, iron works uh, uh, twice yeah. and yeah yeah iron and beer they have to make them uh, in all player count in fact if someone fails to make enough iron on beer it will be very difficult to win the game no matter what else they do um, other than um, making some uh, important rails uh, in the rail era in the whole game, even in the canal or even in the rail era, they should always try to make as many iron and beer possible. Okay. And then what and about then coal? Ah, uh, yeah. I, I was just going to say uh, coal is also important, not as important as iron or beer, but this is also very important. Like it is possible to win a game without making us a single coal, but it is very difficult because that means they actually have to take a lot of uh, they will uh, coal give a lot of income and if they doesn't build coal they will fall behind in income so they will always be in short short in money so they have to take a lot of loan actions mm -hmm. so uh, taking so many loans means a lot of dead actions which are not giving them uh, a lot of dps yeah. but if they can make some uh, coal uh, the coal doesn't give uh, any uh, that many VP, but at least it gives some VP compared to a loan. So if yeah. a coal mine will give a lot of money because they are selling that back to the uh, market and coal is expensive at that moment. And if they are taking a loan, so it is very important to you know, uh, make the income um, tracker go higher. Coal is very crucial thing to make. It's situational, but also very important. Not for VP, but for, to manage a steady income. Yeah. Okay. What What about the other? Uh, what about the other um, products? You know, you have cotton and uh, pottery and uh, manufactured goods. How would you? How would you? What do you think about those? Oh, those we call the main industry because coal and mine are resource and we are you need to sell and double rail. But the main industries we call is actually cotton manufacture and pottery. 
And this actually depends very much on situation. This depends on the merchant location. This depends on the player count. So cotton is uh, very strong for two player. So if it is a two player game, the yeah. player who went for cotton will have the advantage. So often both player will go for cotton and they should be. Manufacturer yeah. is very strong in three and four, four player. Uh, if it is a three and four player game, who is playing manufacturer will have a huge advantage if they play correctly. Uh, oh. It is possible to make, yes. <laughs> and it is uh, possible to make manufacturer in two player, but um, it, it is less strong than cotton. For pottery, uh, pottery is possible to make in both two, three, or four, any player count. But no matter the player count is, pottery is always very high risk, but also give high reward. So in a two player game, uh, if it is very difficult to go for cotton, uh, though it is strong, but they can consider pottery. And in a three or four player game, if for some reason they cannot go for the strong manufacturer, they can consider pottery, but pottery will be always very risky, though it will give high reward. Huh. So, so why is cotton so strong in, in two player and, and not in three and four player? Oh, okay. Um, that the reason is actually the main fundamental thing, and that is the finite number of action we have in this game. Uh, as was as I was mentioned earlier, that there is total 39 action in a two-player game per player, and there is total 31 action in a four-player game. So yeah. you see that the number of action is, is uh, much higher in a two-player game. So when someone, and, and our fundamental is to make as many higher level industry possible in the canal data. So, yeah. uh, uh, a cotton player should make at least two level three cotton in the canal era. Mm -hmm. To make the level three, they actually have to take a lot of development action. So yeah. in the two player game, when they are taking, uh, actually uh, in a two player game, as there are more actions, they can actually um, afford to take those development action. And what will happen is when they are making those level three cotton in the canal era, this gives a lot of victory point. And as they are making this in the canal era, they will also score twice in the, uh, twice because they will also score in the rail era. So huh. they, they are here, here is a huge advantage that uh, uh, at achieving maximum victory point in the canal era by making two level three cotton and two level two beer and selling them with their own beer and also uh, Obviously, they are making the beer and iron anyway. Uh, we are talking on uh, this cotton development and manufacturer after they made uh, enough beer and iron. Mm -hmm. and so uh, when they are making this level three cotton, they are getting very high VP in the canal era. And then in the rail era, when they are making all the valuable um, rails, which are supposed to give a lot of VP, when they are making their last irons, if they have not built all of them in the canal era and making their last beers, because it is a two player game and there is total 39 actions in whole game, there will be always some actions remaining when all these valuable links and iron and beer are made. So yeah. the player with those last actions will be able to make higher level industry they will actually win the game. And only higher level cotton give that kind of very high VP. So if it is a two player game and someone doesn't go for cotton, though up to the end of the rail era or at the middle of the rail era, they will be kind of same. But in those last actions, the player who didn't win for cotton will actually fall behind because they will have all the actions left, but they cannot do or anything that meaningful, which can give that much high GP of higher level cotton. That is why cotton is very strong in two player. Um, so why is cotton so weak then in three and four player? Oh, yeah, it's the same reason because the number of actions. In a three or four player game, there is limited action. 
So no matter whatever industry you are making, you actually have to sell them. If you cannot sell them before end of canal era, or if you cannot sell them in, uh, at the end of rail era, then it wouldn't worth anything. No one give you mm. you point for an unflip industry. So because there is less action in a three or four player game, if you take so many develop action to go up to level three cotton, then you actually will not have enough actions left to flip those level three cottons, especially after making those iron and beers. Because when we are talking about uh, manufacturer cotton or pottery, we will only do is after securing those um, valuable iron points and other things, because these pottery cotton manufacturer are, are more expensive compared to the victory point they give. But beer, they are cheap to make, they give higher income and very high PP. Iron, they are very cheap to make compared to the victory point they gave. So yeah. those are the things they have to ensure first. And after doing that, there is only few actions left to make enough higher level cotton. That is why in a three or four player game, if someone is spending so many actions in developing those cottons, they cannot do anything else. That is why cotton is pretty weak in a three or four player game. And also the thing is that cotton is very strong because they give high VP at the end of rail era when there is nothing else to do. But mm -hmm. guess what? In a three or four player game, you don't have enough action left anyway because in a three or four player game you are making those irons you are making those beer and you are capturing those link positions and then the game is over there's no <laughs> more action left. so yeah. you don't actually have to go for those cottons huh. oh wow so so what development do you do then when playing uh when playing cotton this cotton strategy well uh whatever uh, uh they focus as main industry they always have to take their first develop action and remove two level one beer. And then a cotton player will uh, take another develop action and they will remove their two level one cotton and then okay. another develop action to remove one level one cotton and one level two cotton. So here is total three development action and wow. then they will take their fourth development action. And and they will develop one level two cotton and next one depends on many things. So uh, next one can be level one coal, level one iron or level three cotton two. Oh. So I'm thinking again, first development action will be two level two beer. Second development action will be two level one cotton. Third huh. development action will be one level one cotton and one level two cotton. And the fourth develop action will be one level two cotton and then it depends on the situation. If they know they can make level one cotton because someone already connected a location to the merchant and they have the location card where they can make their level one cotton. Yeah. So then they, they will not develop their level one cotton. Instead, they will make the level one cotton in future. Or maybe when, because these develop actions, they will take randomly uh, when iron price is low or yep. when they build their own iron and they want to uh, make free development with the iron remaining on their iron work. Uh, so they will, they'll be taking this uh, develop action in random time, but at the, when they are taking the fourth development action, it is already pretty late in the game. So maybe they already made their coal level one coal anyway. So yeah. that means they don't have to develop level one coal. But if they cannot make their level one coal because they will not spend a, action to make a link and then make a call somewhere. Uh, 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 action to spend a, spend for a link only to make a cotton is very expensive. Action is very a uh, uh, valuable thing to do, to, yeah. to, to do things like that. So if they think they cannot make the level one call, then they should actually develop the level one call because they don't want to go to uh, a, a rail era without uh, a, being prepared to make coal whenever they need. If they yeah. are, they have not developed level one coal by when they are in rail era, they will fall behind a lot. Yeah. So, so if they uh, make a coal, that is fine. If they cannot make, then they will develop the coal. 
So what if they do not develop level one coal? Then they actually can choose to develop level one iron if they have not built it already for some reason. And if they already made the level one iron and made level one coal, so, so at this fourth development action, they can actually develop a level three cotton too. That way, our plan is to make at least two level three cotton. So they will make two level three cotton and they are already developing one level three cotton. That means when they will be in uh, rail era, they will start building cotton from level four, which is very good because level four uh, cotton are very high value. Yeah. Uh, these are the development action they will take in, uh, in, in Canal era when they are making cotton. Yeah, okay. And so what about, um, you mentioned that, that manufacturer, manufactured goods are strong in three and four player and weak in two player. Why, why would you say that? Oh, um, it is because um, in a three or four player game, there is less action. Mm -hmm. so, so it always boils down to the number of actions, eh? Yes. Yeah. So there, as there is less action, they cannot actually afford to take a lot of, of development action. And to make manufacturer, they don't have to take actually that many development action. They can just take two development action in the whole game if they are playing manufacturer. One development action will be developing two level one BR. So that is one development oh, action. Wow. Yeah. And then second development action will be they are developing level one manufacturer. Yep. And they are developing level one coal or level one iron. Mm. The, the reason is they want to make two level two manufacturer in Canal era. And they mm. want to make two level two beer in the Canal era. They want to sell their both level two manufacturer with their own level two BR. Mm. So in addition to making some irons, they will be doing this. So huh. in a three or four player game, they have less action in their hand. So they are spending only two actions on development, removing the level one BRs, removing level one uh, manufacturer and pairing it with level one coal or iron, whichever they do not want to make. And mm -hmm. that's it. That is how they are making their two level two manufacturer and flipping them with their own two level two beer. There's a lot of victory points with very low actions. Yes. And one magical thing about manufacturer is both level two manufacturer doesn't need any coal. That means, yes. that means they can actually make them anywhere. So uh -huh. they actually don't have to make a link and make it somewhere. Rather, they can actually wait. They can keep building aggressively iron. They can keep securing the beers and, and, and doing everything else. And they can see which are the location card they have, which are already connected to the manufacturer merchant by other players. So mm -hmm. they can actually wait and see who, which locations become connected to the merchant manufacturer merchant, and then they can actually make manufacturer industry there. That way, they are actually saving some precious actions by huh. not making links. And our fundamental is to make as less canal link possible and take advantage of other players' canal link and, and make as many industry possible. So guess what? If they don't have to make a two extra link, they can actually use those actions to make some irons, which are uh, a very good value for money if you count the victory point. Yes. Oh, that's good. And it's and it, but it's very weak. Manufactured is very weak in uh, in two player. Yes. Um. Um. If you uh, go back to the cotton strategy, we are saying that in a two player game, um, there is so many actions that after capturing all the uh, valuable link positions and making all the irons and beers, you are supposed to have some action left. And whoever can get highest VP in those remaining actions by making higher VP industry will win. Yeah. Normally, higher level manufacturer doesn't give as much VP as cotton. So if someone is making cotton in those last actions, they are making industry which will give potentially 12 VP. And if someone is uh, going for manufacturer, 
uh, there are not many industry, uh, uh, high level industries which can give actually that many PP in the yeah. for for manufacturer. Even wow. if that gives, normally those manufacturer is in so much higher level, you actually have to take so many so many development action. Yeah. Then that you are getting from those industry, if you divide them with all the actions you have taken for, by developing them, the actual number of recruitment you get become very, very less. That yeah. is why manufacturer is pretty weak. But, wow. um, but um, there is two exceptions because sometimes the situation become very strange because of the merchant position and whatever the opponent is doing or what the price become for the, the coal and iron. So yeah. uh, if someone want to play manufacturer in a two player game, what they can do is they can make the, uh, the manufacturer game just like a three or four player game but with those extra actions they get in the in a two player game they can actually take an extra development action after making two level two manufacturer so they, they will do all the things same as your four player game but they will take an extra development action and remove level three manufacturer and, and level four manufacturer then huh. when they go to the rail era they will make both level five manufacturer either in birmingham or somewhere where they can make a lot of link and surround that place. That way, even though they are getting a little less victory point from level five manufacturer compared to level four cotton, but level five actually give a lot of VP uh, bonus to the links. So if they can surround a place like Birmingham yeah. with their own links, and if they make their both level five there, then they have some chance to compete with the cotton player because their extra VP with those yes. things will actually cover the lacking from their industry industry VP. Wow, so it, it seems like you got to kind of make that decision fairly early if you're going to make that work because <laughs> you got to plan ahead. Yes, yeah, right. So. Okay, so which developments then would you recommend in, 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 in if you go for this manufactured goods strategy? Oh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, in a three or four player game, first development will be two level one beer and second development will be one yep. level one manufacturer and another one will be level one coal or iron, whichever yep. they do not want to yeah. make. Yep. If it is a two-player game and they want to make level five manufacturer in the rail era, they will take one more development action after making those level two manufacturer. They yep. will develop level three and four and start building level five manufacturer in the rail era. Okay. Yeah. So that kind of summarized what you'd uh, what you chatted about. So that's good. Um, well, let's move on to pottery then. So pottery, <laughs> the very interesting uh, high risk, high reward uh, industry. <laughs> So why why do you yes, yes. do you see pottery as strong? Is it is it uh, is it is it a viable strategy? Uh, it's a viable strategy. It's strong, but it is very risky, and uh, it's a very popular concept in Brass Birmingham that uh, if you have something to do which give you a lot of benefit, but very risky, and if you have to Oh, uh, average thing to do, you actually should focus on something average because uh, if something can go wrong, will go wrong in yes. uh, Brazil. <laughs> people will block you, people will consume your beer, people, yep. people will do everything to stop you. Yes. Yeah, so um, so is there any difference in player count with, with pottery? Like, is it a good is it i assume it's high risk high reward in every at every player account yeah it's true it's actually a uh, very high risk and also very high reward in all player account but it is possible to play in all player account okay. um, if someone is playing a uh, pottery no matter it is two three or four player game what they have to ensure is they make both level one and level three pottery in the canal era and they flip them 
with at least two of their own beer. So ah. what they will do is, if they think the merchant location is very pottery friendly, and they have cards which are very much pottery friendly, and they don't have cards to go for cotton in two player or a manufacturer in three or four player, only then uh, they can actually consider pottery. So it's two okay. things. They are uh, card, they are merchant, both are pottery friendly, and they do not have any other options. Only then they should go for pottery because it's still very high risk. Yes. And they have to ensure that they make both their level one pottery and level three pottery in the Canada and they flip them at, they need three beer and one of them they can consume from merchant and at least two of them, uh, uh, at least two of them, they should make their own beer. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. And so when you're using the development action with, if you're following the pottery strategy, what would you, what would you recommend in that? case well uh, always fast development should be level one beers and then they will make their level one pottery and then they can actually sell their level one pottery if they want yeah uh, because they, they will need money and they will go low in income so if they can make some iron and coal, that is good. If somehow they fail, they can actually sell their level of pottery and become positive. Yeah. And then they can make their level two pottery somewhere to secure the pottery location and then overbuild that level two pottery uh -huh. with their level three. Or they can actually develop their level two pottery and pair that with level one coal or iron, which one they do not want to make, and then directly make their level two, level three pottery. But yeah. that need coal, so that has to be connected to the coal source, which is very tricky thing to do, and which is why pottery is very risky because other people can actually block you by not letting you making um, pottery. Yes. Yeah. Pottery no, is possible gonna... in all player. Yes, yes. Oh no, I was just going to say I was curious what your thoughts were on that level two pottery because it doesn't really give you a lot of value, um, but except for the fact that it can hold it essentially holds on to the it reserves the space for you so you can play exactly. a, a level three or or uh, whatever pottery on top of it right uh, sometimes um iron become very expensive and mm -hmm. maybe you cannot make iron at that time so you might see that if you can make the level two pottery and then overbuild with level three uh, that is actually cheaper than developing and making level three if I don't become expensive. Yeah. So level pottery is for development or overbuilding. It mm. alone doesn't make sense making it. Yeah. Also same for level four. After making level three, if you get the opportunity to secure a place with level four, that means you can actually make a uh, level five uh, in the rail era. Yeah. And and for or you can actually take a develop action to develop level four and yep. you can pair with anything and it is very hard to say with what else you should pair that with um it, it based on a situation but you have to uh, develop level four or at least build it somewhere so later you can overbuild it with your level yeah. five I've always wondered about that, the level two and four. I'm like, what, you know, other than developing past them, I'd never thought of reserving the space. That's a great idea. Um, so tell me, everyone talks about pottery being high risk, high reward. What is the high reward? Oh, oh yes. All you heard so far is why it is so high risk. But yeah. yeah, there is also some high reward. And that is the level five pottery. Um, level five pottery actually gives 20 victory point. Normally to get 20 victory point, you have to make several in industries. So that is several build action. But here yeah. you are taking one build action to make one industry. And when you sell it, you actually get so many victory points. Yeah. That is why it is such high reward. But the risk is that when we were talking about manufacturer and cotton, we always say that uh, you make those higher level industries uh, in the rail era. But one thing is 
no matter what industry you are playing, a uh, manufacturer or cotton, when you are in the rail era, you can always make your level one pottery. Level one pottery, even if you are not a pottery player, you can always make in the rail era because oh. it gives just as much victory point as your own higher level industry. And sometimes it is even cheaper. Yeah. And by making level one pottery, even though you are not a pottery player, you are actually blocking spaces for the pottery player who is supposed to make their level five pottery. And mm. to make their level five, they need to have a location connected to the coal source. But yeah. as you are only making level one, which only require iron, so you can just make it at any time. So when a pottery player just connected that place with the coal, at that moment, you make your level one there and block your opponent from uh, making their highest level pottery. That is why it is risky and also yeah. uh, very rewarding. Okay. All right. Great. Well, um, and so just um, stepping back and sort of dividing the game into the traditional early game, mid game, late game stages, mm -hmm. um, what would you focus on as an opening play and in general at the beginning of the game? Okay, sure. There is actually three things to do as opening move. As it might seem, it's a, a open world map and there is so many things you can do, but there is actually only three things what makes sense. If you are a first player, no matter whatever is the player count, taking a loan is very good. That means you are becoming first player again in the next round, especially mm -hmm. If you have a location card which can make iron, like Stokonten, Derby, Colbugel, Birmingham, or if you have an industry card of iron work, you should definitely take your first action as loan. That way, when you are becoming first player in the next round, you, you can make your first iron work. If other player develop, that means you will become positive income immediately. You already secured a place for your higher level irons because you can always overbuild your level one iron. Yeah. So that's a very logical thing to do. Another time you can actually loan in, uh, in any player count is if player before you, if you are a second player or third player, and if player before you spend some money then if you take the loan you are still becoming the first player huh now yes <laughs> and now another thing to consider as opening move is also to develop if you uh, develop you will develop level one beers because it is very important to secure beer positions whenever you get the beer location card so it's always better to be ready with uh, your level to be at, to make them at any moment. Okay. So uh, iron price is relatively low at first round. So taking a development action is also good. But taking a development action might not be best if it is a two player game and first player already took a loan action. That means you are taking a develop action and then as they are guaranteed to become the first player again, and they will definitely make iron, so they will become uh, positive immediately. So uh, you can actually also make a link, but don't make that link to connect a merchant which will give coal, so your opponent can just make a iron. Rather, make a link somewhere strategically where you will in future can make coal or iron or something, and that also doesn't give um, benefit to your opponent if it is a two-player game. If it is a three-player game, um, the development makes sense because that way you are not actually giving benefit to only one player. Yeah. Any benefit you are giving to your opponent will be divided among all the players. And another possible thing is to do is to make link but uh, there is only very uh, limited time you should do that. That is, if it is a two-player game, 
and the first pair already developed. That means they already spent four money. Huh. So if you make a loan now, which is adjacent to a coal merchant, then you are spending only three money. So your opponent spent four, you spend three by making the link. So you yeah. are actually becoming the first player. So when you are becoming first player, now you can actually take a loan, become negative, get the yep. money, and make a iron. Your opponent already developed, so there is four iron demand in the merchant. So all of them will go back to the merchant, and you become positive immediately. So you don't pay any money to the bank for taking that loan. So only time you should make a link in a two-player game is. Um, when you're when you're second player yep. and your opponent already developed or your opponent already took loan but at that time uh, even if you are making link you don't want to connect it to the coal source so your opponent <laughs> doesn't get all the benefit from your link yeah oh, that's a, yeah that's great and any other considerations in the early game well uh, in, the, in the early game um, First, they will uh, see their hand, which card they got, and they will see the merchant locations. And if they have uh, iron card in hand, uh, they will prepare to make their first iron. And they will just not decide their, uh, by depending on the player count, if it is a two player game, it is, uh, is uh, most of the time very beneficial to choose to go for cotton anyway. And yeah. if it is a three, three or four player game, it is always best to go for manufacturer. But if their hand is too bad, or if they have so many cotton card, so many pottery card, and the pottery merchant is good, they can also consider for going for pottery. But just don't decide everything in the first turn to which industry go as their main industry from cotton pottery and manufacturer, they can still see what their opponent is developing and what is happening. Yeah. So you have a little bit of time to, you know, but, uh, you know, not, you don't have forever, but you have a little bit of time to, to figure out which direction you want to go. Yeah. Right. Good. Okay. Well, um, so tell us a little bit about the rail era and, and making rail in that you know the 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 rail links basically like how does that how would you say that that would um what, what would be your thoughts on that strategy well as we discussed earlier about uh rail links giving a lot of victory points there are only few places uh, that actually gives maximum victory points i'll i'll, I'll tell you some names a link between uh Shrewsbury, Colbukdale, links between birmingham oxford Links between Birmingham Wassel, links between Birmingham Naniaton, links between Birmingham Coventry, links between Naniaton Coventry, uh, links between Barton Derby, links between Derby Nottingham, links between Derby Utuxar, links between Utuxar Stone, links between Barton Stone, links between Stone Stafford. These okay. are the <laughs> That's quite the list. <laughs> yeah. These are the places that are supposed to give. Um, uh, maximum victory points most of oh. the time. So these links will be taken very early by all players. So mm -hmm. every player should try to make links there proactively as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So okay. this is one thing to consider when they are making links uh, where to make. And then some link positions will not or may not worth much, but still worth making rails proactively. Those are uh, Canop to uh, Farm Brewery and link between Kurubinster and Worcester, uh, which also secure a Farm Brewery. If one can make a link in these places, that means they are guaranteed to make beer in future. Beer gives a lot of victory point, and all the beer positions are taken so early by all the players. Yeah. So being able to secure a place where they can make beer at any time in future is something very advantageous. That means yeah. they can make industry and sell them in future. And they will always have place to make beer, or they can make beer later time in their convenience. 
So huh. even though if this link position doesn't worth much VP, the guarantee that they can actually make very high level PR and get a lot of victory point from there actually worth securing these places with link. Yes. Well, and beer is very important. Can, can you give us some strategy tips for making beer? Oh, sure. Well, um, the player who controls the beer will always have huge uh, control uh, on the game. And there are a few uh, strategies to make the beers. That is, you develop your level one beer very early. And as soon as you get location cards where it is possible to make beer, you actually make beer there. Yeah. Because uh, if you do not make beer there early, someone else can make beer there. So they yeah. are stealing the place for you. And there are, if you have save and when you are taking some actions which doesn't need any specific card, for example, development role or or making links, don't use a card which has BR location because you don't know which location you have to make beer because you may have yeah. several beer location card, but some of them can be stolen. So you yes. want to hold all the beer cards until you make, make all your beers. And if you have several beer cards and you can only make one beer at this moment, how you choose? Well, uh, in, uh, in the game, there is a card distribution card, which actually tells which location card come in how many amount in the game. For example, Redditch, Wassel, Naniatel. These location card come only once per era in any player account. Mm, yeah. Cold book deal come with three copy of location card in all player account. Utuk, sir, it comes one copy in three player and uh, four copy, sorry, two copy in four player. Huh. Yeah. So uh, you always see it, this uh, distribution card and have something in your mind that if you have two Stafford card and if you have one Naniaton card and one Barton card, where do you make your beer? Well, hmm. because Naniaton card come only once uh. in the game per era, you are always guaranteed to make beer there. It's very hard for someone to go yes. there and make, make beer with their industry card. So you are guaranteed. You are in uh, relatively no rush to make beer in Naniaten. You know, there is only two card of Barton and two card of Stafford in the game. And you hold both Stafford card. So you are also not in any rush to make beer in the Stafford. But you have only one bar Barton card. That means someone else can have that Barton yes. card too. You don't so want them can, to go first. <laughs> Exactly. So if you can make your beer in Barton, that means you are making your beer and you are, are, are potentially denying a player to make beer there. So this yes. is something to, to consider um, uh, to consider uh, when you are making beer. And another thing is, um, sometimes people don't want to beer proactively because they are afraid that other people will consume it. But what other option they have? Because if they are not making we are there and they are afraid someone else will consume their beer. What their opponent can do is their opponent can actually make beer there and then they can consume it. So they are getting the advantage of consuming the beer and they are also getting the VP from the beer industry. Mm -hmm. But if you are the one who actually made beer there, though they are consuming your beer and taking advantage of it, but at least you got the victory point from the beer industry and you are denying the victory point of that beer industry for your opponent. So it yes. is always very good to make beer proactively. Yes. Yeah, it's never Even if your uh, uh, opponent consume it. Yeah, you never you never uh, uh, run short of a demand of <laughs> beer. So <laughs> right. Um, well, let's look at uh, at, at uh, iron as a as a good. Uh, what strategies would you have for making iron? Oh, iron is such a uh, such a crucial industry. Um, when 
some highest level uh, skill player plays often they do everything so perfectly and the one who made one more iron than opponent or they made one more iron industry than your opponent in the canal era so get yeah. the vp twice the player who owns the the difference between uh, uh, those skill player is so little that it comes to <laughs> the timing of uh, iron industry wow. when they make yeah <laughs> because iron is uh, uh, very cheap compared to the victory point they give and it doesn't need any separate action to flip just yes. think about it what is the most precious thing in this game and that is action when yeah. you are making this highest level industries um cotton manufacturer or pottery or even beer which those beer have to be consumed to to flip that but iron just as soon as someone uh, consume those iron your one flips automatically you don't have to spend any more action without building those so which is huge advantage you are getting so much higher vp with so little money spending any more actions after that so iron is a huge thing so you should make iron as much as possible as proactively possible sometimes people are afraid to make iron because they will not go to the market and they will remain on their iron work and other people will consume that free iron yes it yeah. is true but what they are saving is just few bucks the uh, the the iron maybe it would have costed them two money or one money or three money so they are getting some free iron but what you are getting is very high victory point and that industry will be flipped without using any action so the advantage you are getting is so much higher than giving some free iron to somebody yeah wow that's a, yeah so it, you i guess you like iron a lot <laughs> that's good <laughs> um and uh, I know we've covered a lot of other stuff with uh, <clears throat> with cotton and pottery and so forth. So, what about the <laughs> what about the the turn order? Um, now you have some control over the turn turn order. Um, what what strategies would you say um, you know come to mind on on, on that uh, front? Uh, well, um, he, here uh, a very interesting part of um, Brass Birmingham is controlling the turn order. Whoever spend less become the uh, uh, player or uh, uh, first player or the uh, get their turn before someone who spent more than him or her. So uh, if you can control this turn order, for example, if you become last player and can become first player and then become last player again, then become first player again and then become last player again. So you are always taking at least four actions back to back. Always yes. you are taking four actions back to back. That means you can actually do so many stuffs with your own plan, which other players cannot. You are so much in control of your own things. You are in so much less link of other people interfering. So being able to control this turn order will give you so much advantage compared to other people. And a, a, a very a good way to control this turn order is when you are fourth player, or the last player in a three or four player game. And maybe if you take a loan, so don't spend anything. And if you do something which also doesn't spend much, for example, making a beer or making a coal, or maybe scouting if, if it is necessary to scout, um, then uh, you can become actually first player. And then when you are becoming first player, if you made already beer and if you took a loan that means you have a lot of money you can actually two take two double rail action which we call quad rail huh. and you make some valuable links so you are making quad rail and you are spending so much so that means you will be fourth player very likely so when you are fourth player again you can take loan and you can make beer that huh. means you spend very little you become first player again so then you again take quad rail so you spend a lot of money and you become last player again so that is how you can actually make a loop and you can take advantage of it. Wow, oh, that's, a, that's really interesting. Um, and then um, I know um, we talked a little bit, you mentioned uh, taking loans. Are there any strategies with loans? Uh, yes, there is actually one very important thing to consider when you are taking loan. And that is when you take a loan, you go down by level. 
And when you increase your income, you increase by space. So yes. that is two different things. So uh, normally when you uh, take loan, you uh, make in a round, you take loan and bill cold. So you become negative and positive. Or normally you take loan and then take a sale action. So, so you become negative and then positive or you go lower then higher. Yeah. But doing it vice versa can sometimes depend and, and can, can make the income tracker, uh, the final space of the income tracker one step higher or lower if you do vice versa. So if you are supposed to take loan and make coal, count it twice. If you make the coal and then loan, where will be the final place for the income? Or if you make coal and then take loan, where will be the final place of the income tracker? Often yeah. you will see uh, uh, if you do vice versa, uh, in one way, the income tracker will be one space higher or lower. So you will do it in a way so income tracker will be in higher space. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, so now moving on to the, the mid game and mid era, I guess each, each era kind of is its own separate, <laughs> you know, mini game. You know, what should, be fo what should you be focused on? Well, um, in mid uh, era, in the middle of canal era and in the middle of uh, rail era, uh, there is actually uh, one very important thing to double check. And that is how many actions you have left and what exactly you want to do with those actions and double check that. Because often people are making industries and they want to sell but they are always fall one action short for selling. There is not enough time to make enough beer or not enough time to connect the merchant. It is true in the canal and rail era. So when you are at the middle of canal era, double check how many actions you have and what exactly you want to do to make the successful sale with all the combo you made and do the same thing at, at the middle of rail era. Okay. So yeah, so you're, you're, you're basically counting the number of cards you have left. That's kind of how many actions you have left, right? So, right. yeah, so just, uh, you know, ma making sure that you are, are planning properly for that, for that big play. Right. Okay. Um, now, um, I mean, we've chatted a bit about the end game. Obviously you're going to be focused on just, you know, building the, the highest victory point industries at that point. Um, but, uh, you know, sometimes in, in games like these, there are misconceptions that spring up. And uh, what, what, do, what do you feel are some misconceptions about the, the game in general um, that you might want to clear up for us? Well, um, this is a very complex game and there is so many concepts and um, it is very difficult to figure out which concept is better than the other one. But from my... Uh, experience of a uh, couple of uh, hundred games and observing other professional players to play this game, I can actually say there are some uh, misconceptions and I can, I can actually want to clear them, some of them. Uh, one very popular thing among players to do is leave beer in the canal era for the rail era. So they make beer in the canal era and they don't consume it and then uh, they uh, leave that beer so they can take double rail action with that beer in the rail era. Yeah. Well, there, there is pros and cons both. Like what are they uh, achieving by leaving that beer? Uh, if they can become fast player, they are, they are taking a double rail action instead of a single rail action. So they are making one more link so how much that extra link will give them? Maybe five, maybe six, maybe seven. Mm -hmm. But if they flip the beer in the canal era, then they would have got five VP anyway. This, now they didn't flip it. So this, this beer industry will be scored only in the rail era. But if they flipped it earlier, it would have given the VP in the canal era. So the extra link they are making uh, is going to give just same VP as the, or only a little bit more VP than the, than the uh, BR industry. But if they flip it earlier, 
they would have also got some income from the year one turn earlier. And also there is a risk. If they cannot become first player, that means someone else can consume their beer and, and, and that means they cannot make that double rate. Yeah. So it's a very risky thing to leave the beer because when they are making beer pretty early, because normally people secure beer uh, pretty early, and yeah. it is very hard to know if they are becoming first player or, or not. So leaving those beers is a pretty risky thing. And the benefit is, is sometimes just as much as just as much as uh, consuming that beer early. But mm -hmm. if they can make some beer anyway and they cannot consume that, like they maybe make three beer industry and they make only two, two industry for themselves. Uh, so they can only flip two beers. So there will be one beer left and that then it is fine. But mm -hmm. other than that, um, uh, it is very much debatable if it is forced to leave the beer if they could have consumed it. Yes. Yeah. Huh. Another um, uh, misconception is uh, that uh, people like to mix mass industry because it's very easy to do. For mm -hmm. example, someone is going for cotton and um, and somehow they think um, cotton become very challenging or cotton become very expensive, then they start making manufacturer or someone making manufacturer, they start making pottery just because it is now very viable. Yeah. But this is, this is a wrong thing to do because in the Canada, they will not understand the difference because the victory point uh, if they make uh, some cotton and manufacturer or some manufacturer and pottery, the victory point might even seem a little higher than if they only focused on one industry. But what happening is in the at the end of rail era, they are supposed to make industries which give a lot of victory points. Yeah. But if they mix mass industry, that means they remain in lower level of multi multiple type of industry. And in the rail era, they remain in mid level or lower level of all type of industry. Yes. Because they have not made a single type of industry and they have not pushed it to their highest limit. So in the rail era, they will see all the industries they are making only giving half point uh, compared to the, the, what their opponent are making. Instead, if they pushed only one industry, then, then they would have actually a, a also able to make their highest <laughs> victory point industry of that type. Yeah. There is, there is one exception, of course, as I was saying, even the, the higher level manufacturer or higher level cotton gives as much victory point as level one pottery. So mm -hmm. if the cotton player or manufacturer player in the real era, they are actually supposed to make level one pottery and make other pottery players' life a little difficult. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes sense, actually. That's good. So, uh, are there any other misconceptions that you run across? Yeah, uh, one thing I uh, very often notice among new players, the tendency to consume merchant beers. They are very uh, aggressive to, uh, to consume the free beers available to the merchant. This is actually not worth it. Rather, making own beer and then selling the industry with their own beer worth so much more than consuming those free merchants. Actually, I think from game designer's perspective, merchant beer is there if your beer is already stolen by someone and okay. you have extra time to flip your own industry. Only then you should consume uh, uh, merchant beer. Otherwise, making your own beer gives you so much victory point gives you so much income with so little money and deny your opponent's beer location. That was so much more than consuming a free beer. So don't consume merchant beer just because you can always try to make your own beer and consume those. And if there is merchant beer, which, is, which will give you a victory point and not flipping your own beer will give just as much victory point or very close. 
then you can actually consider consuming machine beer, but those are very uh, rare exceptions. Uh, in okay. general, I always plan to make your own beer and consume them. And another thing is, try to take as less sale action possible. Ideally, you are supposed to take one sale action at the end of canal era and mm -hmm. one sale action at the end of rail era. Because your action is a very precious thing. You don't want to uh, take a, a sale action frequently and just sell one industry. Yeah. Um, plan in a way so you can actually um, uh, sell all the industry once. Uh, it is easy in the canal era because uh, BRs are not normally connected. So there is a, a less chance opponent are consuming your beer, stealing mm -hmm. your beer. In the rail era, if you are making so many industries and uh, you are afraid that if you are making beer, one will uh, consume them, then you may not be able to sell your industry at all. There is not enough merchant beer available. Then actually you can consider uh, making a beer and take sale action and sell some industries and then making another beer in another round and taking a sale action after that. But other than that, always try to take as less sale action possible. Yeah, okay. these are the misconceptions okay. I have for now. <laughs> oh, that's good. Okay, so now that we've covered a lot of strategy, there's a lot of great information here. Um, would you would you say anything about sort of managing um, expectations from players who are going to take this information back to their games of Brass Birmingham and uh, and try them out? Oh, sure. Uh, as this is a complete game, and today we discuss so many concepts I mean, this is like definitive uh, strategy guide. So uh, trying to execute all of them at once in the next game will be very difficult. Yeah. And then uh, expecting everything go right uh, is very, <laughs> it's something very unlikely to happen. So uh, I, I would give an example to manage expectation is that Think about it like a strategy video game, real-time strategy games like StarCraft or Age of Empire. And a new casual player who only plays with mouse and doesn't use keyboard hotkeys. Um, uh, and they know that if they can use the hotkey, they can do so much more. So one day they uh, want to start using hotkey. They learn all the hotkey. And their performance in the game will be much, uh, much older than they used to play with their mouse because they are already very comfortable using their mouse and not using the keyboard hotkey and shortcut. Yeah. But if, if they start using the hotkey and keep trying very soon, in a few weeks, uh, uh, they will definitely uh, cross their previous <laughs> efficiency of playing. And, and, uh, and one day they will definitely become so much better than only using the mouse. Mm -hmm. So. I, I, I would like to manage expectation just saying that you are used to play in a certain way and now you have learned some new information and when you will, when you will try to do that, uh, very likely you will not be able to do your best because you are already used to it something doing something else and you are trying something new today. But after your next game, if you come back to the video again, if you listen to it again, these things we already we talked about today will become more clearer to you. The concept will be more understandable to you. And the next time you try, and even the next game you try, will keep doing better. And yeah. one day you will just master the game just like everybody. Yes. Oh, that's good. Um, what other uh, what other expectations should they have from this from this guide? Oh, um. Uh, it's an expectation, not just from this guide, but from the game, that Brass is uh, number three top game in BGG, and it's also number three in top strategy board game. And this is one of the most perfect uh, board game to many people. But it, but it is not a perfect game. No game is perfect. Yeah. So... Uh, embrace this. No game is perfect. Uh, like even if you play your best, uh, this game has some card draw. So sometimes your luck 
there is very little luck but when you are playing with somebody who have equal skill and both player has perfect information which industries are most valuable which links are most valuable then the not just the card draw even the timing of the card draw will matter because um iron is most valuable if somebody draws all the good iron and bear cards and if you don't get them or if you get them late than the other people uh it will be little difficult for you to score as high as your opponent yeah and this kind of thing will happen very rarely but this can happen but uh, i can say from personal experience this is such a well designed game if you play it several time even this small luck factor will also negate and it become very balanced that way and yeah. um but uh if you uh, follow this strategy guide we talked today even if you play with very uh, high skill player you can expect a win rate of 70% or higher oh wow uh, in in a four player game where your average chance of winning is only 25% so yeah so yeah we can expect that uh, that kind of um uh that kind of win ratio but uh you can never win every game it's just no. not possible no no but that's still that's a pretty impressive uh, win rate you can dominate on game night for sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so just a sort of final question where can people play brass at all skill levels so if you're a beginner if you're if you're a veteran of this game um and everything in between where what would you say is a, a great uh where where would you recommend uh, people play brass well uh, it is always most fun to play with uh, gaming groups in person but uh, luckily uh, there are also uh, some other accessible ways to play this game online these days uh, yeah. steam has released brass digital uh, which is at this moment in early access um, and at this moment it is a very very stable and very good game and the online section have uh, uh many players so they can play online games in steam digital and there is a dedicated uh, discord group uh discord channel for playing brass birmingham online on tts um they can just google uh, discord brass birmingham and yeah. on that channel there is uh, many hundreds of players and and there is a, a, is so many games happening all the time so people can and join that discord channel and always look for game to if they want to play online on tabletop simulator or even on digital yeah as long as people as long as it gives people the opportunity to to play more of this great game um, right you know it's all good so anyway thank you so much for your time you've you've given us a, a good uh you know amount of time and a great strategy guide uh that uh people can use to really improve at this game so I really appreciate you taking um your time to to share this uh, strategy and with all your experience with this game and your enthusiasm for this game. I hope people uh you know got that sense of just how much you love this game and and that's that's why you're so driven to get great at it. And uh so it's a really uh we really appreciate you taking this time to uh, share all this great information with us. No Nathan actually thanks to you for giving me the opportunity to able to share uh, my love of brass with all these people because I love this game so much uh, I really want more people to play this game and when I play with people I always see people uh, like to improve it and and I have got some information for playing this game so many time and I really want to uh, spread this information to you know, people so uh, thank you so much uh, to you for giving me the chance to be able to share this information to the uh, brass players yes all right thank you so much